What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Force here with another Q&A video where I answer questions from you guys in the community. It is Sunday, September 23rd, and the game in the background which you are watching is some Borderlands 2. I've been playing it a crap ton because it is freaking awesome. Yeah, the game's unbelievable, so much fun, having a blast with it, and I've sunk a ton of hours this week uh, between Borderlands 2 and Torchlight 2. I've been playing a lot of games. Uh, so my first question that I'm going to answer today is actually not a Q&A question, but a question that I get every so often from people based off of my introduction. Uh, so as you know, I begin most of my videos with welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, or how's it going, ladies and... No, I don't say that. I say, like, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, or what's going on, or yeah, anything like that. But I get asked a lot, uh, how many ladies are actually watching this force? So I thought this was a good opportunity to talk demographics. When it comes to my viewership, I've got a 6% female audience and a 94% male audience, which is actually up in terms of female viewership from what it used to be. I used to have a 4% female audience and 96% male audience. So thank you ladies for watching. Glad you enjoy the content. And then also I thought we could talk about age range. Uh, so we're going to go from highest to lowest in terms of the age brackets that watch my content. Uh, the highest of 27.5% is the age group 25 to 30. That is followed by 19.8% in the age group 18 to 24, 16.2% in the age group 35 to 44, 12.4% uh, the age group 13 to 17, 10.7% in the age group 45 to 54, and then the age group 55 to 64 makes up 4.6%, I believe that is, and then 2.7% is the age group 65 plus. So there you go, guys. That is the demographic of people who are also watching my content. Uh, pretty interesting makeup, and I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'm more centralized to what appears to be a more mature audience. Uh, again, my, my highest age group is the age group 25 to 34. You, if you look at a lot of other popular YouTube channels, not that I'm comparing myself because many of those channels are just much, much larger than mine, but most of them, uh, the largest age bracket is between the age group of 13 to 17 or 18 to 24. And I also have certainly a strong viewer base there but my, again my largest group is 25 to 34 which I guess makes sense since I'm 26 going on 27 that most of my viewership would be in my age bracket as well people kind of connect with people within their age group typically speaking so anyways let's get into the Q&A for this week First question today coming from X Switchblade who asks, I come from a competitive COD 4 background and Call of Duty on the Xbox is what got me into gaming in general before I got into PC gaming. You seem like a guy who is passionate about the success of the gaming industry overall, so why do you dislike something that is enormous and helping gaming grow? Well, I wouldn't say that I necessarily dislike Call of Duty. In fact, I enjoyed the games that I played. I don't play Call of Duty at all anymore, but I did for a, a fair amount of time, both on the 360, and uh, I actually played the original Call of Duty as well, and I have played one title on the PC. I think it was COD 4 that I played on the PC. I, I don't have a competitive background like you do, but I still gave it a shot. Uh, what I dislike about the Call of Duty as a franchise isn't that I think the games are horrendous, because they're pretty good games. It's the money grab aspect of the yearly release without much innovation that I dislike about Call of Duty. Uh, the truth of the matter is that these games come out, and yes, there are changes. You're not, you don't have to sit here and yell at me, Oh, Force, they changed this from COD 1 to COD 2, and they changed this from uh, Black Ops 1 to Black Ops 2. Like, I understand changes are taking place. But with this yearly release cycle, uh, it's not much innovation and it's not much change. Where you look at games that take two or three years to come out, where there's a lot more that can be done to those games, a lot more of an iterative, pro iterative process, whereas you have these games that are yearly releases and really it's just a money grab. It's these companies trying to get as much money as possible, riding the, riding the success of their franchise. Call of Duty is not going to be uh, successful forever, and so what Activision is attempting to do is, all right, let's get a game out every year, let's ride this wave and make as much money as humanly possible. And I don't fault them for that. They're a business, that's their job. They're, they need to make money to stay in business or else they won't exist anymore and they can't do what they're doing and everyone who has a job there has to look for a job elsewhere. I get it, right? It makes sense. Uh, but when it comes to the quality of the games, they suffer as a result as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, the COD games aren't bad. I'm sure if I played Black Ops 2, maybe I will, that I would have a fun time. Uh, I just don't think that it's a 
I don't think it's a practice that we should encourage. The yearly release without much innovation, and once again, I realize there are changes, but in the grand scheme of things, it isn't much change at all. Uh, I don't think that that's the greatest thing. Now, it, I guess it also comes down to preference because some people are just looking for a slightly updated version of what they enjoy. And if people like Call of Duty and they just get a, a you know a minimal improvement to that experience in the next Call of Duty, then that's you know that's great for them. And I, and I guess another example, you look at Borderlands One to Borderlands Two. There wasn't much innovation between those two and I'm thoroughly enjoying Borderlands 2, so maybe it's just a preferential thing. Uh, and when it comes to games like Call of Duty as a franchise, as you mentioned, Switchblade, there are, there's definitely some really good benefit to it in being such a large figure in gaming that gets a lot of people into gaming in general and maybe converts them into PC gamers or just lifelong gamers. That is a great thing. That is a huge benefit. But still, we should strive for innovation and change. I've heard a lot of great things about Black Ops 2. Maybe they're making some significant changes that will change my mind about the franchise. We'll see. Next question here coming from Shell DC, who asks, when I use Fraps, my video tests end up being a ridiculously large size and automatically create separate videos when it reaches a certain size. How do you get around this and what do I do to merge the recordings together? Okay, so the video editing process, yes, you record and yes, the raw footage is a large size, especially when you're recording in high fidelity. If you're recording in 1080p, maybe even 720p, and if you're recording on higher settings, the file size is going to be enormous. Now, my experience comes specifically from Fraps. I've heard uh, uh, DX Story is also another great recording program. I don't have any experience with it, so I can't really talk about it. So everything that I'm mentioning here is specifically related to Fraps. So yes, while recording with Fraps, you're gonna get these files that are small in length, but large in size. And what you then need to do is you need to take those files and put them into video editing and compression software, which is one and the same. I mentioned in a prior video, what I use currently is Adobe Premiere Elements 9. You can also look besides Premiere Elements, there's higher end things like Premiere Pro. You can look into Sony Vegas, uh, both the Premiere Elements and Sony Vegas, I think are both around $100. Or you can go for a free version of something like Windows Movie Maker. Just Look up Windows Movie Maker, download it, you're all set. Uh, so you take your raw fraps footage, you put it into, uh, I'll just say Windows Movie Maker, assuming that you're taking the free version. So you take your raw fraps footage, put it into Windows Movie Maker, and then it's going to allow you to not only edit all of it together, but you can also do things like overlay text, uh, add fades, you know, make an intro and outro, all sorts of things. And then you use that program to compress all of those files into a much smaller file with everything fully connected. But yeah, that's how Fraps works. You're going to get all these smaller footages and you compress them all together uh, in something like Adobe Premiere Elements, Sony Vegas, Windows Movie Maker, or any other program of the like. Next question here coming from Dull Smile Zero. If G4, IGN, or another big name network offered you a job, would you take it? You know, this is something that I've thought about in the past. I've also thought about what would happen if Machinima offered me a job and they asked me to move out to California. And actually, any of these large networks like G4 or IGN, I would pretty much have to move out to California if I wanted to work in their offices. So it would, it would depend on a few things, but let's just assume that they wanted me to work for them at one of their locations in California. Would I do it? Probably not. Uh, and I'll tell you why. There's a, there's a few reasons behind this. The first of which is I'm interested in my own success and I'm interested in the success of my own brand. And, you know, do I think that I can become the next G4 or IGN within the next one to two years? Nope. Within the next 10 or 15 years? Maybe. You know, uh, what I'm doing now doesn't necessarily put me on that path, but I think if I continue to work to grow my brand and work to grow myself and, and be more than just myself, <laughs> I'm definitely going to need assistance in something like this. I'm going to need people to help me grow uh, for strategy gaming or FSG. You know, IGN once had a longer name and they abbreviated to IGN. I think changing for strategy gaming to FSG would make a lot of sense, and that actually sounds pretty good as well. Uh, you know, I think that that's something like that is the ultimate goal. Uh, moving out somewhere and away from my friends and family isn't something that I'm at all interested in, even if it means they were, you know, offering me more money than I'm making now on YouTube. I would rather continue doing what I love, which I love what I'm doing right now, and staying near the people that I care about. My friends and family, they all live here in New England. They live in the New Hampshire main area. And these are the people I care about. These are the people that I want to live my life with and around. And so, you know, to move out there for the possibility of an extra, I'm just throwing figurative numbers out here, but say they offered me like 25000 more a year than I'm making now, or just something like that. It's like, oh, okay, that's a decent amount of money. That'd be cool. But, you know, is that extra 25000 worth being away from everyone that I care about? Uh, I don't think so. 
yeah, I'm of the mindset where, you know, do something you're passionate about, do something you love and surround yourself with people you care about. And that's how you're going to be happy in your life. And that's what I care most about making a little bit extra money to do something else. Or even if, even if it's making a lot more money, but to be away from the things that I really love, that doesn't translate for me. That doesn't make any sense. And I would rather focus on my own brand and growing myself and growing my network and trying to become the next big thing, then try to go work for someone else and be away from the things that I care about. Next question comes from Hellavast, who asks, Force, do you self-censor your content so that you don't strain connections with game developers slash publishers? How does this affect your integrity as a critic, or do you pretend not to have any and hope nobody notices? <laughs> what a wise guy. If I feel a review is being paid for or promoted by a company, I tend to value the opinion of that review rather low. What is your opinion, Force? You know, this is an excellent question, Hellavast, and I think that anyone who does reviews or takes a look at games and, and discusses them to general gaming public really needs to ask themselves this question. Now, while I don't do full-on reviews, I, you know, I do cover games and I do give my general impressions, so in a sense that is reviewing or basically expressing my opinion on content. And you know what Hellavast is asking here is does the fact that I get free copies of games or review copies or early access or beta access uh, tarnish how I talk about that game? Does it make it so that I basically don't talk negatively about it so that I don't lose these privileges in the future? Now, personally, I don't think that these things occurring affect the way I view or judge games whatsoever, but of course I'm going to say that, like anyone's going to say that. You ask anyone who gets review copies or early access to betas if they're going to be honest about their opinions, yes, they're going to say yes. They're never going to say, oh no, I'm never going to say anything bad, so I continue to get free games. Like, no one's ever going to say that, so let me qualify it a little bit more. Uh, the proof's in the pudding. Take a look at a uh, little game known as Diablo 3. I covered Diablo 3 for a year and a half prior to its release. Uh, people, my name was synonymous with Diablo 3 coverage. If you typed Diablo 3 into YouTube, over half the page were my videos. In fact, I think to this day, if you type Diablo 3 into the YouTube search engine, a good half to, uh, to a third of the page are going to be videos released by me. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I was basically known as the Diablo 3 game. And then what happened? The game came out, I played it for a few weeks, and then I said, I'm not having fun anymore. And I released a video that said why I stopped playing Diablo 3. I expressed my concerns and issues with the game. We had a couple of Diablo cast where we talked about some of the major issues that we had with the game. And then that was that. You know, that is a perfect example. I was uh, very close to Blizzard. Blizzard had sent me out to uh, various events and we'd taken early looks at the game. I got access to beta keys to give away to people, like all sorts of things. And I think it really comes down to approach. And this is one of the, the biggest things that I think that some people can learn from here. Y you can have an opinion on something and you cannot like something without being a jerk about it. And this is the case, not in just reviewing games, but in life in general. Like even in YouTube comments, people, if they don't like something, they just rail on it. They said, this is freaking stupid. I hate you. You suck. And they talk to game developers and said, you need to stop developing games. This is the worst thing ever. It's like, whoa, come on, maturity, a little bit here, please. You can express your opinion or your discontent for a game without being rude or disrespectful about it. And basically that's what I try to do. When I take a look at something, I'll look at the pros, I'll look at the cons, and when it comes to the cons, I'll say, these are my issues with the game, and if I have any possible solutions, I will mention them. I don't always have solutions for games issues because I'm not a game developer, but I think just expressing it in a reasonable adult manner is the best way to go about it. And I realize that not everyone does that. Some people, if they dislike a game, they will just rail on it nonstop, and they'll say it's the worst thing in the world. Uh, you know, if if I ever come across a game that I think is the worst thing in the world, <laughs> think about how ridiculous that sounds, then I will say it, then I will mention it. If it's the worst game I've ever played, yeah, you're damn right, I'll mention it. I've, I've checked out games before that I thought were completely terrible, but I still look for redeeming value, and I still say, if I can, what they should do to fix it. And I think that that's the best way to approach things. Try not to mistake my approach to reviewing games or my approach to talking about games issues with being uh, not completely honest about them. Because I am honest, I'm just honest in my own way. And I don't approach things that I don't agree with or that I dislike in a disrespectful, rude manner. I try to do it in a constructive manner. And I think there's a lot of people out there who check out games who don't do that. They like to just rail on them if they don't like it. And you know what? Part of the reason they do it is because it gets people all worked up and all the people who also don't like the game there's a rallying cry behind it and I don't think we need that I don't think it's helpful I don't think it's constructive I think if you have an issue voice it in a reasonable manner don't be a jerk off pretty simple life lesson
Next question here comes from Rob C41288, who asks, do you profit more from vids if people favorite like them, or is it only based on views slash unique views? I don't bother hitting the like button for any vids usually, and I usually only add music to my favorites, but if it were to help you out, I, and I'm sure others also, would certainly give your vids the thumbs up or favorite. So it doesn't help directly in terms of monetizing, but it definitely helps out a lot. Uh, what the whole liking and favorite thing does is it helps YouTube decide what to suggest suggest for content to other people. So the more views something has and the more favorites it has, the more likely YouTube is to suggest it to people who look at something like that. So for example, if you were to, uh, if, if my force feed gets a lot of likes and favorites and someone is watching some gaming news show, the, it, there's a higher possibility that my show will show up under the suggested list of videos. And that's basically how it works. That's, that's again, it's only a small part of it, but it is part of the algorithm. So yes, if you like and favorite videos, it definitely does help me out because it helps uh, other people see my content. But really the greatest thing you can do if you're looking to help is just spread the word. Uh, anyone out there, if you have friends who are into gaming and you think they would like my content, tell them to check out the channel. And that's the best thing you can do. The, the more the word is spread, the more people check out the content. And whether it be in person or on online forums, uh, the better off and the more likely I am to grow. And so yeah, it, and it's not just for me, this isn't like a completely selfish thing. Anyone out there, anyone on YouTube or in general, if you like someone, if you like the, what someone produces, tell people about it. Word of mouth is the best way because you know people trust their friends, and that's that's why word of mouth word of mouth advertising is so damn effective. Because if you tell one of your best friends this is awesome, check it out, they are going to do so. 99.9% .9 of the time, if if a close relative or friend and someone you trust their opinion tells you to see something, you're gonna see it. So, yeah, that's how it works. Tell people, and it will grow. <laughs> Sounds weird. And our final question for today coming from Copper Whiskers, let's talk Titan. I heard on the grapevine that it might have in-game advertising. If this means the game is completely free for us, great. If the game is not free, I will not be happy. What do you think about playing free AAA games through in-game advertising? Well, I agree with you. If there's heavy advertising, I think a lot of people will not be happy. I think it depends on a lot of things. I think it depends on how they approach the advertising, what their pricing model is going to be. Are they going to be producing a subscription-based MMO? Uh, some would say probably not. Uh, I think free-to-play is kind of the way to go, and I think even Blizzard might be seeing that. But then again, they are Blizzard, and they probably could charge a subscription fee, and it may still do very well. There's still so little known about Titan, so I'm not even going to hypothesize into what their pricing model is going to be. But when it comes to the advertising and whether, whether or not uh, people would be okay, or whether or not I would be okay with in-game advertising resulting in a free game, I think overall, yes, but it's going to depend on how it's done. If we're talking about like you're playing the game and every five minutes they, they roll an ad that you have to sit there and watch, no, 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 no. I think that would be horrendous, but that's not so likely. I think what's more likely, if let's just pretend here, I'm just throwing this out. There's been there's been word through the grapevine that uh, that it's going to be an MMO FPS or something sort of like that. That's and again, there's no way to confirm that, but that's part of the rumor that's been spreading around. So if it turns out to be, let's say it's an MMO FPS and they have billboards. It's a, it's a current setting MMO FPS and the billboards make sense. We're not like a thousand years in the future and looking at, uh, you know, Fruit, Fruit Loops billboards or something like that. Something that probably won't be around a thousand years from now. If it's a current setting game and they've got like billboards or banners or posters or things that already exist in our world so that it's not so obtrusive, I don't think that that, it's not so intrusive, I don't think that that type of in-game advertising would be that awful. Or maybe if they ran, uh, you know, maybe if they ran like a little banner in the lower right hand corner, but even that I think that people would have a lot of problems with, even if it were free. I think the best thing to do would be to smartly integrate advertising into the game and if it makes sense within the world then I think it could be fine but if it's completely out of place it'd be I mean it'd be so weird seeing like a coca-cola ad uh, like on a billboard while playing World of Warcraft like that wouldn't make any sense but if we're in a modern setting setting in a modern city or even a slightly future setting in city and there are, are again billboards or posters I think that'd be fine and I think that that type of in-game advertising could work instead of people playing it paying a subscription fee or paying for a box as having a free game and getting paid through advertisers as long as you have a large a large 
a large group of people playing the game who are actually seeing those ads, I think it can make a lot of money off of ad companies. Uh, it is probably more likely that there will be some other way of them making money and they'll also do in-game advertising. And I know some people aren't going to be too happy with that, but that seems pretty likely. Let's pretend they go subscription-based and they'll have still in-game advertising. Or even if they're free-to-play and they have microtransactions, uh, a la something like the Diablo 3 Auction House or maybe more vanity items like a lot of other free-to-play games, and they still have in-game advertising, I think that that would probably be a little less bad for people. People would be a little less offended. But if they were to try to charge a subscription, fee plus in-game ads that would be a major problem for a lot of people and I don't think I would like it that much either all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up this Q&A video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Once again, if you have a question that you would like answered in a future video, please be sure to leave that in the comment section below. I'm going to be trying to answer anywhere between 5 and 10 questions every week, somewhere in that vicinity, depending on how long the answers take me. Thanks again, guys. If you like the content, please subscribe. Also, spread the word. And as always, keep watching and keep owning.